Today I'm going to show you how to uh, wedge clay, but first, before wedging clay, we're going to knead it first, very similar to pastry cooking, uh, kneading dough is done almost in the same fashion. So first of all, I've got two two kilogram blocks of clay here, I'm going to make this as uniform as I possibly can, and the way you do that is by pushing down and away from you, this is called ram's head kneading and you'll see why very soon when I give you and show you the shape that the process creates like a ram's head. And the idea is to to push down and away from you so that you form folds in the clay and as it comes towards you and spreads out wide you reach a point where you take it back to where it was before roll the clay back over again and knead through the process. Now Kneading clay uh, depends upon how well the clay has been prepared beforehand. As you may very well realise, the better the clay is prepared, the better the outcome on the wheel later. So the idea is to get this clay nice and uniform and mixed together in this ram's head style. Again, I'll show you the pattern. That's what it should look like when you're doing this action, pushing down rolling it away from you as you do it and there's the horns turn it around to a 90 degree angle fold it back over and away you go starting it again and there we are again there's the shape that's the way you fold it over and then pushing down and kneading carry this process through for, for about five to ten minutes depending on how well prepared the clay was before. If it comes to a pug mill it may not even be necessary to go through this step before you go to the wedging process. The wedging process is <coughs> called de-wedging and I'll, you'll soon see why it's called de-wedging but you take your piece of clay using your left hand lift the clay up at the back pick your uh, wire cutter or nylon cutter as I use up with the right hand, place it so that it's about halfway through the clay, put the clay back over the top of it, put your hand on the, the other side of the cutter and then place the cutter back at the top. Then you take the piece closest to you and roll it over towards you, hit it down on top of the other piece so that it's the cut face is above the cut face. I'll show you that again very shortly. And why do we do this? Well, not only does it help uh, make it more uniform in the same way that kneading does, it also removes any air bubbles that might be trapped inside. I always wedge my clay beforehand because I don't want to take the risk of there being a bubble in the clay because that's fatal when the clay goes into the kiln after it's been formed into a pot, that bubble still exists, you can have a massive explosion. So, again, lifting the clay up at the back, a quarter turn in a clockwise direction, pick up the cutter with the right hand, put the left end of the cutter down underneath the block, put your hand on that cutter across to your hand. Now the reason why you do that is if your block is small, when you lift up to cut, you may lift the clay off the table. So the reason why you cut across 
is so that you don't lift the clay up. Taking the piece closest to you, you roll it over so that the face of the clay is facing you, the cut face of the clay. You raise the hands up above at a good height like this, and using your wrists, it's a sort of like a flicking action, you whack it down, but keep your hands to the top of the clay. Don't let your fingers form dents in the clay because you want this surface to be nice and smooth with no dents in it so that when it, it's, it's whacked down again that you will have a rounded surface striking a rounded surface and you won't trap air within it. So again lifting it up from the back with the left hand unsticks it a quarter turn clockwise pick up the piece of uh, pick up the cutter lift the back up put the cutter underneath about halfway put your hand on that cutter cut across place the cutter back in that easy position for you to access later on roll that piece of clay towards you if you have a look at the the cut face if you see a split in the cut face you can see where the air has been forced out when you hit these together so again hard down hands on top it starts with the hands on the side you end with the hands on the top get this nice rounded shape now we called what we called this before we said it was de-wedging all right let's have a look can you see the shape it is a d shape and that is by nature of it being cut now probably you're asking the question well how many times do i need to do this well the answer is pretty simple 21 and why 21 well, by process of permutations and combinations, and I'm not a mathematician, that number of cuts, by doing this 21 times, will in actual fact be over a million cuts through the clay. And this will help not only unify the clay, but it will also help remove any air bubbles from it as well. I'm just going to show you the face of this clay again. As you can see, that's where it's joined, cut face to cut face. If there's any air, it would come out through those cut faces. Again, turning at 90 degrees. Cut through, place it back, down. So the action is quarter turn, lift, place the cutter underneath the clay. Put your hand on the side of the left side of the cutter, cut across, place the cutter back to the top, roll the piece over, lift it up, smack it down, and that's the sound you want to hear, that smack sound. If you hear a good smack sound, then you know that you've got that um, process down pat. If you don't, if you hear just a thud each time, that means that you're pushing the clay down rather than smacking it down. So that's pushing the clay down, you won't get a smacking sound. If you smack the clay down, you get that nice smacking sound. That's what you're looking for in the wedging process. Do your turn. And then finally you get into this rhythm. And you think, oh gee, it must take ages to do 21 cuts. Well, believe you me, once you get into this rhythm of cutting, turning, wedging, the process takes less than three minutes and if you're doing around about four kilograms of clay there's quite a few pots to be made out of four kilograms of clay unless you're getting into the large wear and there we go simple <laughs>